and welcome back to another video on how to program a Discord Python bot. So today we're going to take a look at how to program some chat functionality for your bot. And the way it's going to work is that we make a command where you type exclamation mark chat and then it initializes a new chat session and then you can just chat away with the bot. And uh, once you're done chatting, you just type uh, underscore stop and that ends the chat session. And you can always start a new one by just typing exclamation mark chat again. So before diving into the code, I just want to mention that what goes on under the hood is that we use this Cleverbot website here. So we just take what we write in Discord and then we forward it to this website right here using Selenium. And then we get a reply back. We take this reply and we just output it on Discord. So that's the way it basically works. Like I said, we're going to use Selenium for this, which makes it free, basically. Uh, we just, you know, use the browser version here. But uh, they do have an API as well. Clever bot. And ideally, this is what you want to use because, uh, you know, not to, uh, to overuse and, uh, and exploit their service. So I do recommend that you use the API if you, if you want to uh, go for this for real. But uh, just as a hobby project, I think it's fair enough to, uh, to use Selenium for this. But yeah, that's entirely up to you as well, I guess. Anyway, let's take a look then. So first of all, let me just give you a quick overview. So this is the chat command that we have here. Also a few aliases. But uh, this is what you call in Discord to invoke this functionality here. And so, yeah, it's basically this code here. And also this code here in this class. So uh, let's go through the command code first. So initially, I just defined the stop signal. The reason why I chose this underscore stop thing was because we use exclamation mark to, to invoke like commands using the Discord API to not confuse this with the internal stop command of this specific functionality, I just chose a different uh, prefix basically. But you could choose something else as well. All right then, so what I do here is I like to use this lock thing here because this is asynchronous and I'm operating with a file. I'll get back to what this does. But uh, the reason why I have this uh, lock in front is just to not get any headaches with like multiple uh, like pointers being in this command. Like if multiple people are chatting away at the same time, invoking these chat sessions, we don't want multiple uh, like uh, writers to the same file uh, at the same time while we are processing the file. So this way, by just writing asynchronous or async with, and then this lock here, which is uh, basically just, you know, defined like this using the async IO um, module, you define this lock. And that just basically handles uh, this for us. So we are sure that there is only going to be one writer in here at a time. And we, of course, relinquish control when we're done uh, down here. Now, what I've done here is I create a file called uh, basically Cleverbot Active Chat Sessions. And it's just a serialized data object. Um, and this file just contains a set, initially empty. And we want to just record uh, like which Discord users are actively having a chat session. So that's what this uh, data uh, file is for. So let's just take a look at this code real quick. It's very basic. It's just if uh, if like if it exists, then don't do anything. Otherwise, just create it and put in the initial value. It's just uh, like an empty set. But yeah, we just load the file, get all the active users, and then we check if the author of the message that is being sent, like invoking a new chat session is already in there. If they already have an active chat session, then just say, well, you can't have multiple and then return. So that's just, you know, to prohibit that a certain user starts and like a million chat sessions. We don't want that. All right. And then if everything is good, if they haven't already started the chat session, we, we start a new one. So we call this, uh, uh, so we make a new clever bot object here um, I'll get back to the details of this but basically what this does it allows us to initialize a connection um, and then we can uh, after this basically chat away with it using the get response function down here but I'll just get back to this let's just take this from you know from the top okay and then we update the file say that this user is actively participating in a chat session and we write it back to the file and that's it. So pretty basic, uh, just, you know, reprocessing, I suppose. 
So this is the main loop down here. So we say, okay, the chat is active. And while it's active, we want to wait for a message from the user in the chat session. Right now, I have a timeout of 60 seconds. So if the user doesn't type anything uh, for 60 seconds, the uh, like connection is going to close on its own. And we use this wait for uh, command part of the Discord uh, API. So wait for message and wait for a message that satisfies this predicate, which is basically just saying, uh, well, it needs to be this specific author um, that invoke the chat session, and it should also be in the right channel. So we cannot switch channels and continue the chat conversation because that would be a little bit confusing, I think. So that's basically all we do here. Yeah, and like I said, if we if we timed out, then we just end the chat session by setting the flag appropriately. Okay, but uh, what we do then is just you know we check for the stop signal, which was just uh, to stop, and then we stop it. Otherwise, if it's a command, we just ignore it. It starts with an exclamation mark. That's what we use to signify a command. When I say command, by the way, it's one of these again. Like it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with this specifically, this chat functionality. So just ignore that. And otherwise, we want to trigger that we like the bot is is you know answering this reply. So this code runs when we get a message from the user, and then we want to get a response. So we use our um, like uh, instance here, cleverbot instance, based on the message content. And if well, for some reason, if cleverbot uh, the website doesn't return anything, then we just say okay, let's just stop. Let's just uh, end the chat session. But this doesn't happen usually. But uh, you know, just a precaution. And this is basically what we uh, what we want to return the the response that we got back was just some text. And finally, what we do is we just terminate the connection. So, like we get to this part down here once the chat session is over, um, and uh, then we just want to close the connection to Cleverbot. Uh, we have an active Selenium session that we want to close. I'll get back to this as well in a little bit. But just close this and just um, basically update the active chat uh, sessions file by just removing the author of this chat session because they're done chatting we should remove this author so they can start a new chat session again and yeah that's basically all there is to the main chat command not too bad i think and yeah let's take a look at the rest of the code needed to run this Okay, so here we are in the class. It's just a very basic class where we just use Selenium. So we start by setting the options in the constructor. I'm going to use Firefox for this, but you can also use Chrome. It doesn't really matter too much. And I just output a log to this location. It's not required, but yeah, it's just nice, I suppose. And you need to, of course, have the right imports uh, that match with the uh, browser framework that you're using. Right, so in initialize connection, which is basically just we want to establish a connection to the Cleverbot website. Uh, we just call make a get request to the Cleverbot URL. And then first of all, we want to find the element with this ID and click on it. And what this essentially does is just says, okay, every time we come to Cleverbot, this is the message that we get. So we need to click on this uh, box, basically. As you can tell, uh, the div is uh, has this ID. So uh, just click on this and uh, then you get to the uh, actual formula. So that's what we find here afterwards. Uh, find the element with this class name st stimulus and that's uh, basically this field right here. Good, so now we have that element and we can use this by sending uh, basically keys. So we take, we get a message uh, from like uh, what the user wrote on Discord take this message and then we also add a return character like basically enter so you actually write something and then you or oh, like we get a reply back but like you, you might have noticed we got it back like piecewise we didn't get a whole string of text immediately it sort of came uh, like character by character so we what we need to do is we need to wait a little bit so 
what I'm going to do here is a little bit it looks more complicated than it is. Basically what I'm doing is just saying, okay, uh, we impose a maximum restriction on the, the amount of seconds that it takes to get a reply back. If for some reason it takes, you know, 10,000 years, we don't want to wait 10,000 years. So we're going to wait a maximum of 15 seconds, but usually it takes a lot uh, shorter uh, time than this. And then uh, I have these variables here, response before and response now, which are used to check if we're still getting input back. So as long as these do not match up, uh, I have these sort of uh, predicates. I have, I've sort of used some some meaningful names to signify what they are, but basically uh, it's just we want to continue while uh, we still have waiting time and we have not uh, like received a response at all or if we're still receiving a response. Okay, so that makes sense. And then just update the, the right variables down here. Um, so they, you know, actually reflect the current situation. And also update the waiting time quota. And uh, basically, yeah, just update the response now, which is what we ultimately want to return. And we're going to sleep one second in between this. Yes, we don't want, like, it doesn't need to sort of check all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, so we check. Um, and wait one second, we get something more back, which we wait one second, we get some more back. And at some point, we're not going to get more back when it's done. And well, if we if we are in that situation, then we say, okay, we're done getting response. And we just return this to the user, which was uh, not the user actually, or indirectly, but we get it back here in response. And then we using the context object, which is always passed to a command, we can actually send the response back to Discord. Now, one last thing here to note is that we need some kind of exception handling here. Uh, initially, when I tested this out, I ran into some trouble with um, like a prolonged uh, like chat session, because for some reason, um, uh, Cleverbot, like the website, refreshes after you've chatted for a long time, you've written a bunch of stuff, uh, then it refreshes the page and you get a new URL and, and you need to focus on this field once more. So this is what I try to handle down here. So basically, if for some reason uh, we get this exception, um, then we we allow uh, like one retry attempt. So we try to find the element again after just waiting a little bit uh, for good measure and then we uh, we keep going basically, so we we re like recall this recursively, but we don't want to <laughs> have any kind of uh, stack overflow exceptions or anything like that. So that's why we have this is retry attempt flag here. So we only allow one retry retry attempt uh, basically. So that's just a, a little uh, extra note, but it's not something you need to worry too much about as long as you only have short chat conversations anyway. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope this is useful for you. I think it's pretty cool, pretty neat. And as you can tell, it's not that difficult to actually, actually make. And it's even simpler, I think, if you use the Cleverbot API, you can just, you know, if you take a look at the Evolve from Alpha the video I did, we also used uh, an API, which was free, actually, um, where we, uh, we could process some queries, and we just used the API to uh, uh, to make re uh, requests and get responses back with the with the answer. So, if you if you use that uh, for Cleverbot, it would be even simpler. But this shows you how to use Selenium, and this would be free. But uh, but yeah, it's not something that's meant to be uh, to be used in production or commercially or anything like that. Just you know, just as a hobby project, I suppose it's fine. So yeah, cool. Uh, I guess I'll catch you in the next one, next video that is. Take care.